Um, you have, hopefully you're on your second page of the notes, and we are going to talk about matter today, which a lot of it's going to be familiar for you, so we're going to go pretty fast. So matter is the stuff that makes up the universe. The stuff that makes up the universe. This is, uh, the picture is from NASA's picture of the day, and it's a galaxy with a super galactic wind. I just thought it was cool since we're talking about the universe. Oops. Matter has mass. It takes up space. And it's composed of atoms that are continuously in motion. I just realized why we ran out of time last hour, so I'll tell you about it. Um, when it's your birthday, you get three options. You may either have me very quietly say happy birthday to you if you don't like people making a fuss. You could have the entire class sing happy birthday to you. Or, and this is my favorite, we could put your name in flames on the table up here. So I write out your name with methanol. It's an alcohol. Alcohol is a whole class of molecules, organic molecules that contain a hydroxide group. What two elements are in hydroxide on? Oh, nice. Good. Oxygen and hydrogen. Hey, good job. Um, so you'll get that option when it's your birthday. Um, I try to always remember whose birthday is when because I write it up on a calendar. If I miss yours, please let me know. If your or birthday is in the summer, we celebrate half birthdays. Yeah. If it's on the weekend, we'll celebrate it either right before or right after, depending upon what else we're doing in class. Sometimes if our class day is really odd, um, we might have to wait a couple days or do it a couple days early. Good question. Okay. That's what took so long last hour. I'm gonna do two quick demos and you're gonna tell me what those demos are proving for us with this, these statements here. So one of the things that I'm gonna do is take a piece of paper and my Red Robin cup. How many of you have been to Red Robin before? Raise your hand. Do you like it? Have any of you had the Royal Red Robin burger? Um, it's got a fried egg on it. I thought, oh man, that would be disgusting. It's so good. Um, fattening, but good. So I'm going to put my paper into my cup, and then I've got a bucket full of water. I want you to predict on your sheet of paper, is my paper going to get wet? And then just put my cup down like that. Just right down, yeah, it's gonna get wet, no it's not. Okay, so let's put it down. Pull it up. Now I might get a few splashes on. We'll see if it's really wet or not. What the oh Oh, sorry. I was trying to get that far enough that you can take a look at it. Tell me if it's wet. No. It's not wet. How many of you guess it doesn't matter? How many of you guess that it would not be wet? Raise your hand. The majority of you are guessing that it wouldn't be wet. Um, Which of these things, either one, two, three, or four, show me with numbers, one, two, three, or four, is this demo proving? a lot of threes. Yeah, so it was proving that matter takes up space. Absolutely. What's the matter that was taking up space? It wasn't the paper. It's yeah, it's the air. air. Absolutely. We can't see it, but it's there. We know that. You're used to that sort of thing. Um, let's see. Since it's Park Pride Friday, we're going to go with some orange, or we're going to make orange, hopefully, with some red food dye and some yellow food dye. And my Yoohoo bottle here. How many of you like Yoohoo? Anybody? Nobody last hour was like, oh yeah, I love you. 
My husband likes Yoohoo a lot, so I have this extra bottle here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like chocolate milk, but I don't know if it's actually chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposedly tasty. I don't drink it. Um, I'm gonna put one drop of each of these in here, and notice I haven't been spin stirring it or anything. I'm not gonna stir it. I'm just gonna leave it be. Do they stay in place when I drop them? No. So, using your numbers again, one, two, three, or four, what is this demonstrating? Yeah, so I've got water and food dye in there that are in motion. And we're going to watch this throughout the class period. It would be better if we could watch it all day long and see if it actually does look as nice and even as if I had stirred it by the end of the day. We'll see what it looks like by the end of class. Might not be as good as it would if we waited all day, but we'll see. Okay, question so far on what matter is. You probably had a good idea of it before. The key that people end up forgetting about is the composed of atoms that are always in motion. Even those solid desks that you have right in front of you, it's composed of atoms that are moving. They're not moving a lot, but they're moving. Okay, so two main types of matter. There we go. Two main types of matter. We've got pure substances, which could be one type of atom molecule or compound. Sorry, I'm looking for a little of faces. Thank you for checking. Or we could have a mixture. A mixture is composed of two or more pure substances that are physically combined. parts are not going to be chemically bonded. If they were chemically bonded, we'd have a pure substance. <laughs> Mixtures are relatively easy to separate. You just need to know how to do it. So some of you did sludge last year, the year before, where you got a mixture of stuff and you had to separate it all with like filtering and sifting and distillation. That's what's going on here. Pretty easy to separate. Okay. So we're kind of thinking of today as a tree, a matter tree matters at the top and we're going to be splitting things up. So we've split matter so far into two things, pure substances or mixtures. We're going to look at pure substances next. So a pure substance could either be an element, which is composed of many of one type of atom, that are not actually bonded. They're all together, like my ring here is gold. They're all together and they're held together with some intermolecular forces. And in a few months, we'll talk about what I mean by intermolecular force. They're not actually bonded, though. They're just around one another. It's going to be anything that's on the periodic table. as long as it's not bonded to something else. So if I said sodium chloride, sodium's on the periodic table, so is chlorine, but they're bonded together, so it's not an element. If I just said sodium, that would be. But sodium chloride's not. We could also have a molecule 
this is where our sodium chloride would fit in. It's two or more atoms that are chemically bound. And they could either be the same two, or they could be two different ones, like our table salt, sodium chloride. We can break elements down even further one more time to atoms. An atom is the smallest particle of an element that retains the properties of that element. And we call it the building blocks of matter. Okay, molecules can be broken down further as well to either compounds, which are two or more different atoms that are chemically bonded. And here's the kicker. So, a compound is always a molecule, but a molecule does not always have to be a compound. So some of that chemistry jargon. This is where chemistry gets a little bit more like a foreign language than what we normally think a science would be. Okay, two main types of mixtures. We can either have homogeneous or homogeneous, is two ways to say the same word, homogeneous or homogeneous mixture, which we also sometimes call a solution. That's where we have uniform particles that are evenly dispersed. Like that bottle there, my old Yuhu bottle. Those are getting more and more evenly dispersed as the molecules within are moving around. Or we could have a heterogeneous mixture. This would be like oil and water. It's not uniform. And the particles are unevenly dispersed. Okay, here's my tree. I want you to make your tree in the space that's provided there. Start out with matter and break it down. We'll see if you come up with the same thing that I got.
What two things is matter split into? Go ahead. Oh. Yep. Pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances can be split into what? Go ahead. Elements and molecules. Elements and molecules. Thank you. Elements can be broken down to what? Go ahead. Adam. Adam. Beautiful. Oops, I went in the wrong order. Sorry. Homogeneous, what would the other one be? Heterogeneous, thank you. Here's Adam. And then what would fall under molecule? Compound. Beautiful. Good, good. So hopefully you have something like that. Then you can flip your page again, I believe. And we're going to look at some stuff. This is stuff you've seen a little bit already. We're going to look at some more stuff that you've seen a little bit already. We're going to look at states of matter. So here's, here is a chart. Some of this chart repeats. So before you start rewriting everything all the time, start looking at some of the stuff that repeats. So gases assume the shape and volume of its container. You probably knew that part already. If I put some helium in this room, it's going to spread out until it's filled up the entire room as far away from the other particles as it can be. If I have a balloon, it's going to fill up as much of that space as possible, as far away from the other particles in it as possible. This is the part that a lot of people don't quite know yet. So what this really means is that the particles can move past one another. Okay, they're moving a lot on their own and they're trying to get as far away from the other particles as possible. And sometimes they move just right past one another. Gases are compressible, so I could take that balloon and press in on it and make it smaller. I'm going to increase the, the pressure, decrease the volume. I can do that because there's lots of free space between those particles because they want to move so far apart from one another. Gases flow easily from one location to another. And this, here's one of those first repeats. So here in red, particles can move past one another. That's here too. Particles can move past one another. So this is giving you the reasoning why these things happen. It's because those particles are moving past one another. Bless you. And this chart is from Purdue. If you have a liquid, it's going to assume the shape of the part of the container that it occupies. That's the difference between a gas and a liquid. The liquid's only going to fill up to the amount of volume that's there. It's not going to keep spreading out to be far away from each other like the gas will. So again, we see the particles can move or slide past one another. So we've got a repeat here, except we're adding one new word, a slide. Liquids are not easily compressible, though. Not like a gas is. And that's because there's not a whole lot of free space in between the particles. Liquids do, however, flow easily, just like gases do, and again, that's because the particles can either move or slide past one another. Solids are kind of the odd guys out. They retain a fixed volume and shape, unless like you have a piece of wood and you end up sawing into it. They're very rigid because the particles are basically locked into place. They're really not easily compressible. I can't make my block of wood smaller by pressing on it. And that's because there's not a whole lot of free space in between those particles which again is a repeat from what we saw here with liquids. So you wouldn't have to rewrite that, just a little arrow. And solids do not flow easily. I don't normally see solids flowing. 
how there are some exceptions. This is a very broad way of thinking about things. Um, glass, for instance, over millennia, start, I think I had that paper of glass there, it's going to start shifting down, even though it's a solid on all normal manners that we think of it. It's going to start shifting like the liquid does. So some really old panes of glass you're going to see are not at the nice consistency that they were originally. So this is a very broad way of thinking of it. We try to put things into these categories. Sometimes they fit in multiple categories. Superfluids. Yeah. Superfluids, absolutely. Yeah, we've got non-Newtonian fluids, all of those things that we're not going to talk about now, but don't quite fit in. Questions on that? I still see a lot of writing. We'll wait just a little bit longer on this one. But it's also a liquid. I think it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cornstarch and water is another one of those that would fall in between liquid and solid. It depends on what you're doing to it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of water is what that takes. Can you get in between liquid and gas, or gas and solid? Yeah. Uh, Yes. I can't think of any gas and solid ones, but I'm sure that there is. I just finished reading a book, and now I can't remember what it's called. If I remember to look on the library site, I'll tell you when we get back. That talks all about special examples of these different things. It's very interesting. Um, not the best read ever, because it's like all run-ons. Run-ons kind of bug me. Okay. This next one, you probably know most of these. We're not going to talk much about plasmas in class because they're not really the elements or compounds that they were before. They're ions now. They have to be ionized for them to be a plasma. So we're not going to really talk about that part. You probably know a lot of these. Solid to a liquid that's melting. We deal with that every spring. Liquid to a solid freezing. We deal with that at the end of every fall. So if you know these things, don't feel like you need to rewrite them. The big question here, how do we make these changes in states? It's all dealing with energy. Either I add energy to the system or I reduce the energy of the particles in the system. That's going to change the state. And that's what this enthalpy of system means. We're increasing the energy as we go from a solid to a plasma. And this is a wiki image. I'm going to move on. I know some of you are still writing. You can get it from somebody that did get it all written down. And we're going to end our notes today with this. So phase change diagram. You may see these at some point. Um, this is a very general one. It's not for a specific element or compound. It's going to change for each element or compound. Yeah. Is this from something it's from wiki books so it could be yeah um the couple of things that you're not going to see on here or that you know triple point is where we have solid liquid and gas all at the same temperature so we have some of it acting as a solid some as a liquid some as a gas at that temperature and pressure and then the critical point is the point 
where uh, it's at highest temperature and pressure that the main states can exist, and then it starts going into these odd things like a supercritical fluid.